Now let's consider Francois Quenet, a very influential 18th century French economist. Quenet was leader of a school of thought called the Physiocrats, and this gets off the ground in the late 1750s, lasts for about 10 to 15 years, but it leaves an indelible mark upon economic thinking for a long time. Quenet created a quantitative economic model, which he called the tableau économique, or in English you could translate this something as like economic table. The major edition of this was created in the late 1750s, and you can think of the tableau as representing the circular flow of funds through an economy. It seems the tableau was very much influenced by Canet's background as a doctor and his study of the circulation of the blood. By the way, Canet worked for the king, and he also was directly the doctor to the king's mistress. Here's a reproduction of the tableau, which is a somewhat strange zigzag diagram, but basically the zigzags are tracing the flow of funds through an economy, and the diagram is intended to be used for what we would now call comparative statics. That is, you would introduce some change in funds or economic activity at some point in the diagram, and then by following the zigzags, you would trace how this would affect the overall economy. I wish I could tell you there was some simple way I could make this diagram more intuitive for you with an example, but unfortunately that's not the case. Historian of thought Mark Blaug edited two volumes on Kinney, and he started off his introduction with the following passage, and I quote, Kinney is one of those economists that students and even many of their teachers must leave unread. So intricate is his reasoning, so convoluted are his calculations, and so steeped is his every word in the outdated political philosophy and economic circumstances of 18th century France that only years of study can make any sense of his writings. Nonetheless, there are versions of the Tableau Economique online, and you can Google to them if you'd like to take a closer look. In the Tableau, there are three major branches of economic activity. There are the landowners, there's what Kinney calls the productive class, which is basically farm labor, and there's also what he calls the sterile class, which are traders and merchants. Keep in mind that during Kinney's time, the French economy was largely agriculture, and one of Kinney's political enemies, Colbert, was going to great lengths to boost industry and in some regards penalize agriculture. So his advocacy of the economic dynamacy of agriculture perhaps should be viewed in this context. The details of the tableau really are tough going, but I view Kinney as mostly important for some of his big picture thinking. For instance, the now common macroeconomic notion of an economy as a circular flow really owes a lot to Kinney and the tableau économique. Later inspirations in 20th century economics also drew at least indirectly from the tableau, and this here I'm referring to the input-output tables, say of Vasily Leontief, the idea of building a computable general equilibrium model, which is something quite modern, and then just the general sense, which you also find in Hayek to some degree, of the notion as an economy, which is something which involves a computable process of some kind. That, too, you can actually find in Kinney. Consistent with his view that agriculture is the truly dynamic sector and the source of economic surplus, Kinney and many of the physiocrats advocated a single tax on land, and this later became an influential policy prescription. Also notable in Kinney and some of the other physiocrats is this notion that economics should be concerned with a theory of the origin and distribution of the surplus from an economy. This, in part, comes from Kinney. It proved to be a big influence on Turgot, on Adam Smith, and, above all, on Karl Marx. It's another sign of just how much influence Kinney and the physiocrats had. Kinney was an advocate of free trade, but it wasn't the comparative advantage argument that we later find in Ricardo and others. So for Kinney, exports are useful for maintaining the price of grain. It's good to have a high and steady price of grain, because that keeps up the stability of the grain supply, and Kinney saw that as good for an economy. In general, he favored high and stable prices for agriculture, and he also has a general worry about whether or not there'll be enough aggregate demand in an economy to keep up the supply of farm products. 
these arguments did push France in a more liberal direction with regards to trade, but it would be a mistake to think they're identical to the later classical liberal 19th century arguments for free trade. It also would be a mistake to think of Kinney as some kind of theorist of laissez-faire. He did on average favor a freer economy than many of his contemporaries, but he also somewhat idealized the government of 18th century China. In general, he still wanted rulers at the center of the economy. He simply had a different formula for how the rulers could bring about stability and prosperity. For further reading, well, you can, of course, Google Kinney and physiocrats and tableau économique, and there's plenty on the web. But if you'd like to read some historians of thought on the physiocrats, the ones I recommend for a start are this list here, Ronald Meek, Joseph Spengler, Mark Blaug, Warren Samuels, and Robert Eagley. You can find their works online. Some of these are gated through JSTOR, but nonetheless, to really dig into the physiocrats, outside commentary is extremely useful, and those are some of the writers who have done a lot of good work making Kinney and the physiocrats more intelligible.